Hey, GoWolfhair with an update on Silver Wolf. She was released in 1.1 and will be rerunning in a few days from now, and lots have been asking to see how much she has changed since then. I'll only be updating guides if a lot has changed or enough people ask for it, and Silver Wolf hasn't seen as many changes as I hoped, but her rerun is soon and I will be discussing stuff that release guides didn't dabble on too much, as well as the energy issue she has and how to fix it post 1.1. I will also go through the units one by one that were released since her release and see how she can complement them. So like and sub if this helped, let me know below if you're pulling on her rerun and let's begin. So for a quick kit rundown for those unaware of what she does, she is all about applying her various debuffs. She can implant the weakness of your allies elements on enemies, allowing you to break them with said element when you normally couldn't do so. She can reduce the resistance of enemies on top which allows you to do more damage, and being especially helpful versus enemies that aren't weak to your element, which will reinforce her weakness in plant's power. And then, she can reduce the defense of your enemies, alongside making them slower and do less damage. She has a lot of different benefits that aren't necessarily seen when you are fighting. That one enemy she is debuffing will obviously be shredded, but those bugs she applies to enemies all around will help out your team behind the scenes. So instantly, onto relics. An easy rate she is going to be supporting your team. She needs too much effect hit rate as well as a means of getting energy, so even with light cones that buff effect hit rate, investing into crit won't give you as much damage as you'd hope for, and at that point you should give in those high crit pieces to a DPS. Don't let me stop you though if you do run DPS Sir Wolf at E0. So at E0 you have two routes if you're not going for the sussy crit build. You either go full support on her, or you go for break Silver Wolf. Full support will see you literally going whatever. You just build for high speed and her effect hit rate needs, which we will see in a bit. Relic sets can be 2 hacker, 2 HP for example. You can even go 4 passerby if you won that skill point. She's built to tank damage and go fast, making your sustain have an easier time, generating overall more skill points, as well as being fast enough to keep a high uptime on her damage amping debuffs. Break effect Silver Wolf will see you either going 4 thief or 4 quantum, and you can still be tanky due to the orb not needing quantum damage percent, since quantum damage percent will not buff break damage, so you can go HP percent orb. Between 4 thief and 4 quantum, it comes down to investment and energy needs and what domain you want to farm. If you do not have or use the tutorial light cone, just go 4 quantum for break effect silver wolf. The reason why we'd use 4 Thief is for that 3 energy, which is exactly enough to fulfill the 3 energy we need after a 3 turn rotation with the tutorial light cone at E0. However, if you have external energy like War War, Shared Feeling for example, or you have high break effect investment in subs and run Bonwack or Penaconi, the Quantum set will be doing more damage than the Thief set. This is because in 1.2 I believe, they patched it so Death% percent ignore works on break damage and entanglement. So on top of Silver Wolf's 53% death shred, you now get an additive 20% death ignore. As we know, death reduction scales higher the more you have of it, until 100%. So this 20% death ignore is so strong for her break damage, equaling about 50% break effect in stats at high investment. The reason why people go break effect Silver Wolf is because of how powerful entanglement damage can be, especially against bosses. And since at E0 and E1 she needs a lot of effect hit rate investment, we can't really dabble into crit. Break effect on supports is a good way for them to do damage that they normally couldn't do. Furthermore, Silver Wolf increases break damage by a ton due to her defense and resistance reduction, whereas break damage can't be buffed by the standard harmony buffs like attack percent, damage percent, and crit. She can also implant quantum weakness, and she implants this before her 60 toughness damage skill. She has very high toughness damage of course too, with her single target attacks. Finally, Quantum Break will delay enemies. Not only does this help survivability, but this also helps the duration of your debuffs, since that 3 turn death reduction now just became a little bit longer. Enemies having their weakness broken is also an extra 1.11 times damage to your team versus that enemy, so even more damage amp, and for longer, because why not? So onto effect hit rate needs, we look to guarantee her skills implant chance. Doing so guarantees her ultimate defense shred and her skills resistance shred. Her bugs on her talent are not worth going further in effect hit rate stats, needing 132% to guarantee your talent bugs, and 157% to guarantee your break bugs. So here are all the effect hit rate needs of her at E0 depending on your skills level. 
And if you end up getting E2, here are all the effect hearing needs of her at E2, depending on your skills level again. For planar ornaments, she normally would run a supportive set like fleet or kill to help out allies even more. If you didn't want to run an energy rope, she would run Von Wack too. With Panaconi out, we now have a better Von Wack if you're running a Qingshui or a Zila. It will give that same energy percent she needs for the 3 turn tutorial rotation, on top of now a nice 10% damage to quantum allies. For DPS Silver Wolf ornaments, I'd say run the new Glamoth set, or Inert Sal Soto. In between her skill, ult, and basics all contributing to damage, Glamoth should provide the most benefits. For light cones, she will want to use her tutorial light cone, of course, it's just too good for her. At E0, it's better than her 5 star signature, unless you can get a 3 turn rotation at E0, since her debuff uptime is too much to lose out over the benefits of Incessant Rain. At E0, if you don't have tutorial, you can use Incessant Rain, of course, but there's also Eyes of the Prey for her effect here it needs, even if the dot passive is a bit useless on her. You also have the Resolution Light Cone for a total of 69% Death Shred from Silver Wolf alone, which she would appreciate. Ideally E0 though, you go tutorial. At E1 onwards, Incessant Rain takes over for her damage and team damage, with Good Night Sleep Well or Patience is all you need being best for her personal damage. Running tutorial post E1 is still fine, but now you can run any light cone without worrying about those pesky energy needs. So for main stats and stat goals, we will split it by build. For full support, go effect hit rate, speed, tank, energy or tank, depending if you have Von Wack or Panaconi plus tutorial or not. Aim for at least 3000 HP and 1000 defense. Speed as much as you can while still getting that 97% effect hit rate. For break effect Silver Wolf, you'll go effect hit rate, speed, tank, and then break effect or energy rope, again depending on tutorial or if you have the right plane ornaments. We'll see full energy needs in just a little bit. Ideally, you get over 100% break effect pretty easily. For crit of wolf, go crit, speed, quantum damage percent or attack percent orb, then attack percent rope. You'd want to run this at E2 ideally, E1 at the bare minimum, or E0 if you don't care. She can also go energy rope if you want to go for fun alt spamming memes. So on to energy needs. She is so annoying with all her different rotations, with tutorial, with E1, so I've grouped them into different categories. With tutorial, you should be hitting a 3 turn rotation with 1 skill and 2 basics. The problem is you need 3 external energy, so here are some of the ways you can get that 3 energy. Getting hit, or a kill, or quid pro quo also work, but they're more RNG unless you can tune quid pro quo to give Silver Wolf exactly the energy she needs. Without tutorial, since some are starting after 1.1, you'll be opting for a 4 turn rotation with an energy rope. At E1, she can gain up to 35 extra energy per ultimate, enabling a very fast rotation without tutorial or super fast rotations with tutorial. I'd recommend now swapping to Incessant Rain if you have it at E1 and going for a 3 turn ult. If you want fun rotations, here are some as well. So that's all that have changed on her builds. Because I get comments saying nothing changed, let's summarize for them. Quantum Set is now her new best relic set at high investment break effect build. She can now run Hackerspace 2-piece on her support build for extra speed. Panaconi is now her best supportive plane ornament set when you do have a quantum DPS. Glam Moth is probably her best plane ornament set for crit DPS. And Huahua is a very cool sustain that can actually use shared feeling very well, meaning the tutorial 3 turn rotation has been saved with just one skill use from Huahua, allowing for very different plane ornament sets and different rope options. Whether you should pull for her or not is up to your account. She does help you build less units since you can brute force elements a bit easier with her. So for newer accounts, she's great. When you do get more and more units, her value does drop a bit outside of mono quantum shenanigans. She does enable new things you can do with your teams and adds a lot of team variety, or removes a lot of team variety depending on what you do with her. Versus Pella, for full AoE, Pella beats her of course, since 5 enemies with 40% death shred is better than 1 enemy with 33% res shred and 53% death shred. Versus 1 enemy, or perhaps even 3, considering 2 of them are probably weak mobs, Silverwolf's damage amp is so much stronger, and the additional breaks on top are very underrated. Pella will be providing more skill points if you care about that though. I wouldn't say one is better than the other until you consider certain scenarios. Saying Pella is outright better than Silver Wolf is just cope, but she does beat Silver Wolf in skill point generation and AoE fights. 
versus bosses and elites though, there's no denying her power. For synergies, let's review who has come out since 1.1. We've had Blade, and alongside Bronya and Hawhaw, you can build a fake mono wind duo Bronya extravaganza comp. Blade loves Silver Wolf in the team due to attack percent buffers barely boosting his damage, and he loves Bronya for the same reason alongside those extra actions. We've had Kafka too, and Silver Wolf can boost both the main kit of Kafka and her dot sub DPS alongside the break damage of all of those units, a feat only kits with enemy modify debuffs can do. She can also do some mono lightning stuff with a break cell ball if you like that. She doesn't mesh well with Lune due to his high skill point needs and preference for AoE Shred, which Pella conveniently fixes for both issues. Fushuan definitely boosted Wolfie a bit since mono quantum was now possible. You still don't go full quantum just yet, you'd rather go a fourth slot harmony and match the element of the enemy, but Fushuan or Lynx in the team, alongside Silverwolf and a quantum DPS, is a really nice and comfy team that I see a ton. Jing Liu really likes Defense Shred since she saturates a ton on attack percent and crit, and so Silverwolf can be really nice for her. Unfortunately, again, Pella exists, and with Panacony, her E4 reducing ice resistance, and the skill point generation for, say, a Bronya in the team on top, Pella is usually the ideal pick for Jing Liu teams, but she can work instead of Pella if you like. Topaz doesn't really see a need for Silver Wolf, but her single target damage playstyle can see benefits from the high damage amping debuffs. Topaz E1-S1 also provides a ton of debuffs if you do run that E1 Silver Wolf, but that's just a whale bonus. A dual element team can work with Topaz, Asta, Silver Wolf, and Fushuan or Lynx too. Warhaw's energy is really nice for those annoying energy rotations, and the previously mentioned mono wind team is a possibility. Argenti and Hanya are coming out alongside Silver Wolf's rerun, so mono physical memes may happen too. Argenti's ult would definitely benefit from the single target damage increase she can provide, since he will be pretty AoE focused damage wise. So that's all on the Silver Wolf update. I wish any pullers good luck, and let me know below if you're pulling at all. Thanks to my awesome members, thanks for watching, and have a good day.